Hello and welcome to another episode in the Godot Basics tutorial series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at a KISS principle example through code. To refresh your memory, the KISS principle is keep it simple silly, and it's vague because the interpretation is left up to you as the developer. Now we will be going through an example, but it's going to be a little different. We're going to forego, for example, the dry principle and all other principles you may know about, only to explain how the KISS principle can be implemented. So as a beginner who has gone through the GDScript fundamental tutorial series or knows GDScript syntax, may be wondering how do we go about applying the KISS principle. But really, it's just an iteration process. You are rather the more you program, the better you get at realizing that some ways of solving a problem is easier to read and write than other ways. And that's exactly what we will be going through. We will be taking a look at the evolution of a code that solves a problem. Now, here we have a problem, our game problem. Now, if a player has collected the first two items from the level due to exploration, we give them a power up and increase it when other items are collected four items total. So in this sense, we want to thank the player for exploring a level, but we only want to give them the benefit, or rather we want to make the game easier for them only if they've explored. If they haven't explored, they, they don't get anything. So when we take a problem, we can turn it into pseudocode. And so when we write it down, we can say something like this. If we have all first two items, get quarter mode. If we have all first two items and one of the last two items have God mode. And if we have all four items, then we get God mode and everything else is regular mode. So because we only want to benefit the player who collected the first two items in the level, that means if they were to collect the last two items, they shouldn't receive any benefit from it. Now, why we would implement that in a game, I leave that up to you. But this is the game problem we are going to try to solve with code. And then we are going to see how it evolves over time. And this is basically what the KISS principle is. You take a code and you iterate it until you get something you like. Now we're going to pretend that this function ready is really just a function power up with items 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now when we pass values from the function, we're going to assign them to local variables. In this case, you can see we have our four items and they're a Boolean value. We just need to know whether the player has them or not. And so that is passed to us in items 1, 2, 3, and 4, keeping in mind that items 1 and 2 are mandatory if you want the power up. Now this is our first crack at trying to solve the problem. So you can see here we have an if statement chain and just by taking a first look at it it's not easy to read it. Now because I wrote this I understand what's going on but if I were to pass this to someone else who has no clue and I ask them to double check that this piece of code satisfies our game problem you might not have, or rather the programmer might not have an easy time. However, this code still works and it satisfies the problem for our game. Now, some of you may not write code like this, but when I started programming, this is how I would have written code to solve that particular problem. So as a programmer, you ask yourself, is this good enough? And can we do better? And yes, we can do better. From the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial series, we learned about logical operators. And so we can use logical operators to make the piece of code less intimidating. In this case, if we have items one, two, three, and four, we do God mode. And if we have three of the four pieces, making sure that items one and two are true, we get half God mode and it just trickles down. So you can see here, this is a better way than the first piece of code. And that's because for one, everything fits in the screen, which is a good thing. One thing to keep in mind when writing functions is that it helps that your functions can fit in your screen. You know your function has too much code when it cannot fit in your screen. So that's one thing to note. And that's why this way of writing the code that solves our problem is better than the first way we had. Now the second reason is because it's not really an if statement chain. I'm, in the sense it's, it's an if statement chain, but it's not a massive nested if statement chain. We do keep going down, but it stays on the same line rather than nesting down. As a programmer, you do want to avoid if statements inside of if statements. Sometimes 
it's necessary to do that. We cannot escape it. But in this case, for this particular problem, we don't need to write our code this way. However, when we take a look at this code, we ask ourselves, is this good enough? And can we do better? And at that point, it's just up to you as a programmer. In this case, in my opinion, there is a simpler way of writing what we want. And let's take a look at that. In our third example, we have a match statement. And we put our items inside an array, and then we test that array with other arrays to get what we want. So if we have all four items, god mode. If we have three items, half god mode. The first two items, quarter god mode. And then our wild card, which just means if we don't have true for items one and two, then we just get regular mode. So you can see here this line of code, one, solves our problem, but two, it's more compact than our second solution. But using the second solution or the third solution is up to you. If I were to see the second and third solution, I'd have no problem reading it. And that's all the KISS principle does, is making sure we write code that when other programmers read it, they are able to understand what the code is trying to do. Again, we're not trying to use any other principles like the dry principle, for example, having all these print statements. But after, but the KISS principle, you would try to use the dry principle. So again, in these examples, we're not looking at the dry principle. So some of you may be thinking we could put the print statement inside its own function and have that called. And that would be a good use if you find yourself using print statements a lot, because you can see here we're repeating some of these codes. But for this example, we're we are just taking a look at the evolution of code. So moving on, when we have our third solution, we ask ourselves, is there another way we can write this code? And yes, there is another way we can write code to solve our particular problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So as you can see here, we've created a variable item count and that acts as our counter for the for loop. We put our items inside an array, and then we loop our array for single item in items held. We check if our single item is equivalent to false and item count is less than two. What we're basically saying with this code is check the first two items and see if they're false, because if they're false, we want to break. We don't care what the value is, and we don't care about iterating the for loop anymore if item one or item two is false. However, if the items are true, we skip the if statement, we move into the second if statement, if single item is equivalent to true, item plus equals one. Now we count our items inside our counter variable item count. And once we're done with the for loop, we go into a match statement. And if we were able to iterate through all four, it means that all four were true, and therefore we print out God mode. If we have three, it means we have at least the first two items, item one and item two true, and then either item three or item four false, and we print half God. And if we have two, that means that the first items were in fact true, and so we print out quarter, and then anything else is just regular mode. And basically you take this piece of code, which, for one, doesn't fit inside my screen, and you ask yourself, is this a better way of writing code that solves our problem, and is it better than the match statement we have? And in my opinion, the answer is no. However, you as a programmer need to make that decision for yourself, because there are no right answers when it comes to the KISS principle. It's just a saying. However, let's take a look at a different problem where this piece of code would be in fact better than a match statement. So let's change the game problem and let's say that, so let's say we don't care about the specific order. In our first game problem, we cared that the player was carrying items one and item two. However, now we don't care what they have. Instead, we only care about the total items held. So for example, if they have a total of four items, God mode, if they have a total of three items, half God mode, if they have a total of two items, quarter God mode, and then anything below two should be regular mode. What this means is that our player doesn't have to collect the first two items in the room. He can instead go to the second room, collect the last two items, and still get quarter God mode. So if we were to try to write this solution, we would first need to understand how many combinations we are working with since the third 
solution was using a match statement. So let's see how we would write the solution inside a match statement. So we take our array and we check for each index how many possible choices can we have. And since for Boolean values it's either true or false, that means a total of two, two possible values. And we do that for each index. So that's two. And we multiply them all together. So two to the power of four or two times two times two times two. And what we get is 16. And that is how many possible combinations we need to write in our match statement. So right now for the first solution, our match statement was great. But if we have to write a match statement for every possible scenario, we would have at least at minimum 32 lines of code. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we would change this to answer our new game problem. So we have the same thing. We have items count starting at zero and items held, which is just an array of our items and we use the for loop to iterate our array and we only have one if statement we only care if the item is true and then we just count it and then we use our match statement to find out what mode our player is in so if they have four items god mode if they have three items half god mode if they have two items quarter god mode and even though we use the wild card, it's just basically anything less than two. So one or zero, we print out regular mode. And as you can see here, this piece of code is easier to read, write, and manage than a match statement that has 32 lines of code. So in conclusion, one way to think about the KISS principle is one, is our solution to the problem easy to read? And if there had to be some kind of unspoken guideline, that would be the less code you are able to write that solves your particular problem, the easier it is to read that piece of code. Well, this episode went a little long. So in summary, KISS principle is vague. It's left up to interpretation to you as the programmer. You use the tools and knowledge you have at your disposal to solve problems. And when you look at a piece of code, you ask yourself, is it possible to write this in less code? And if you are able to write it in less code, you ask yourself, is it easy to read and understand what the code is doing? And if it is, then congratulations. You have a piece of code that fits the KISS principle. And that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you for joining. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions or you need anything clarified, please feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section down below. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.